The war between the house of Saul and the house of David lasted a long time. I just needed to be reminded of that again this morning. But David grew stronger and stronger, while the house of Saul grew weaker and weaker. Oh, if you missed last Sunday, go back to the website and get that word. Whatever is working against your life is growing weaker and weaker in the name of Jesus. And that good thing of God in you is getting stronger and stronger and stronger, even while we as a church are now living in a land of captivity. So, so I don't know, I needed to hear that again. Thank you, God bless me. I mean, God bless you. Mark chapter 8, verse 34. There will be no more simpler message that could ever be preached than what I'm about to preach today. But the Apostle Paul challenged us and warned us not to lose the simplicity of the gospel. Not to lose the simplicity of the gospel. Not to complicate uh, our faith and living for God. Then Jesus called the crowd to Him along with the disciples and said, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. Now Jesus in that verse gives us a three-step process to truly becoming a follower of His, a follower of Christ. Deny yourself, take up your cross, He didn't say take up my cross, I'm going to come back to that in a minute, and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me and for the gospel will save it. What good is it for someone to gain the whole world and yet forfeit their own soul? Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? If anyone is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, the Son of Man will be ashamed of them when He comes in His Father's glory with the holy angels. Man, if ever... That is a right now timely word to the church in America. If we are ever an adulterous and sinful generation, the, 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 the nation of America is. And, and it's, it's harder and harder to openly love Jesus. Notice he says, if you're ashamed of me, I'm going to be ashamed of you when I return. But what I want to really focus in on this morning is this three-step process Jesus gives for truly being a follower. Cut out everything else. When the lights go out, the bottom line of, our, of each of our lives is, are we true disciples? Are we true followers of Jesus Christ? He says, deny yourself. Now, I could, I'm probably going to take most of my time talking about this. Deny yourself. Now, the Amplified Version of Scripture uses this phrase, and I love it. Lose sight of yourself and your own interests. Now, if that ever challenged the culture of Jesus' day, oh, my mercy me. Does that ever challenge the culture of 2016 in American life right now today? Everything about Modern culture today promotes the accommodation of self. And Jesus is telling us, do not ever accommodate self. Lose sight of yourself and your own interests. Don't accommodate your feelings. Oh, goodness. Don't accommodate your fleshly urges. Don't accommodate your appetites and cravings. Don't accommodate your opinions. Rather, deny your selfish self. Self will never be anything but selfish. Self will never be thoughtful. Self will never be courteous. Self will always want to accommodate self and put self first all the time. 
Let me just let me just say this. You'll never be content living to self. There's no contentment that can come from self. None whatsoever. There is nothing self can do to satisfy my life. Self will never satisfy you. You will never be content accommodating self. Oh, how we need the vision of heaven today. Oh, how we need the vision of God today in our lives. Because without vision, all we do is see ourselves. We've got to have vision to see beyond ourselves. Without vision, all we do is serve self. Without vision, all that our faith becomes are creeds and ceremonies. And Sunday morning becomes a mere religious ritual. God's Word is loud and clear. When you live to accommodate yourself, you will reap corruption. I want to read from Romans chapter 8, a very well-known passage of Scripture, but it fits right here. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. So in other words, he just qualified who those that are in Christ Jesus are. They walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Look at this. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. To be carnally minded or fleshly minded or self-minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Self is not going to heaven with you. (laughs) The flesh is not going to heaven. Scripture is pretty clear about that. From the moment of birth, your flesh begins a slow death. Flesh is not going to heaven. Your spirit, man, renewed in Christ Jesus is going to heaven. And you know what? The flesh ain't happy one bit about that. That's why the flesh wakes up with you every morning. (laughs) And reminds you. To put it, to put self, to put your flesh first. You know, beware of people that start every conversation like this. Um, I, 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 I feel. Uh, um, uh, I, 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 I feel like. Oh, oh, by the way, how do you feel? About this. I, I don't feel like. There's nothing in your feelings. Which come from the flesh. That have anything to do with your faith. Those are people who live after the flesh. I just don't feel like. Because let me tell you something right now. Your flesh is never going to wake you up on Sunday morning and say, Get up, it's time to go worship God. Your flesh will never do that so long as you live. Your flesh will never do that. (laughs) Your flesh will never feel like serving God. Your flesh will never feel like loving God. Your flesh will never feel like obeying God. And your flesh will never provide for you anything that counts for eternity. 
Because your flesh, my flesh, will never be anything but selfish. Deny yourself, Jesus said. Romans 13, verse 14, Paul says this, Rather, clothe yourselves with the Lord Jesus Christ, look at this, and do not think about how to gratify the desires of the flesh. Do not think about how to gratify the desires of your flesh. So yes, the flesh has been completely excluded from the plan of God in your life. The flesh has been left out on purpose by God. And until the day you and I die and see Jesus face to face, the flesh, my flesh, your flesh is not going to be happy about that. Put on the Lord Jesus. Make no provision for the flesh to fulfill the lusts thereof. That's how that verse goes in the King James. Put on Jesus Christ. Make no provision, no provision for the flesh. The flesh is dying a slow death. And the flesh is going to die kicking and screaming all along the way. You know, Paul told us outwardly, outwardly we're wasting away. Yet inwardly we're renewed day by day. But outwardly the flesh, the flesh is not going to heaven. The flesh is going back to the, uh, from dust whence you came, from dust you're going back. That's what, that's the future. That's the eternal, eternal, eternal promise concerning the flesh. This flesh that we're dealing with right now. Do not gratify your flesh. Do not live according to the flesh. Deny your flesh. Self-denial. Every single day. It's something Paul said, crucify. I crucify the flesh. I die to the flesh every single day. And yet, I don't know, I think, well, the flesh is a zombie. The flesh is a zombie. Y'all know what I mean. You shoot the flesh, cut the flesh, stab the flesh. Flesh wakes right back up with you the next morning like nothing ever happened. Isn't that kind of like what a zombie you can't kill? Can't kill them? You can't ever kill the flesh. you got to bring the flesh under subjection to your spirit man. That's why the New Testament talks a lot about what to do with the inner man. Renew the inner man. Renew the inner man where the Holy Spirit lives. Strengthen. Again, the inner man grows stronger and stronger and stronger. The flesh, the, the influence and the control of the flesh over you grows weaker and weaker and weaker. And yes, I'm not standing here to tell you you can't wake up one day and have the upper hand. Yes, we can. By the, by the Spirit of the Lord, you and I should have the upper hand over the flesh. Absolutely. But that won't happen if you're feeding the flesh. Look what Paul says. Rather, in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 4, as servants of God, we commend ourselves in every way, in great endurance, in troubles, hardships, and distresses, in beatings, imprisonments, and riots, in hard work, sleepless nights, and hunger, in purity, understanding, patience, and kindness, in the Holy Spirit, and in sincere love in truthful speech, and in the power of God, with weapons of righteousness in the right hand and in the left, through glory and dishonor, bad report and good report, genuine yet regarded as imposters, known yet regarded as unknown, dying and yet we live on, beaten and yet not killed, sorrowful yet always rejoicing, Poor, yet making many rich. Having nothing, and yet possessing everything. What Paul has just described is the life lived in a war between the spirit and the flesh all the time. He says honor and dishonor. You know, starved to death, hungry, but not, but not dead. Beaten, but not, uh, 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 not um, uh, killed. Uh, poor, and yet at the same time, ri- I mean, you can't understand that, but by the Holy Spirit. It's It's a mystery. But Paul's just described for us what a life of the Spirit is like. The flesh is always there. The flesh is always going to be screaming at you. The flesh is always going to try to get you to do what you feel like doing. I hope you don't think I feel like preaching every Sunday. 
I bet you I've had more Sundays I didn't feel like preaching than I did feel like preaching. It ain't about how I feel. It's about I want to be a true follower. So I want to deny the flesh. I'm denying the flesh. I'm denying the flesh. I feed my inner man. My spirit man grows stronger. I die to my flesh and I got to do it every day. And if I wake up in the morning, I got to die to my flesh again. And if I wake up another time, I got to die to my flesh every single day because you can't kill the flesh. The flesh is like a zombie. Always there, you know. All bug shot, bloody eyed, all oozing and, you know. That's a good imagery of, of your flesh. Some of y'all look so pretty up in there, but if we could see your flesh, if we could see your flesh. The flesh is an ugly, selfish monster, zombie. <laughs> Now, I want to take a little detour right here. It's a little, little inspirational word, simple little word, and we're coming back. You know, the Bible tells us in John chapter 3, verse 16, probably the most famous scripture verse in all of the world, repeats again in John, 1 John 4, verse 11, talks about God so loves us. God so loves us. I mean, I would be happy to just know God loves me. But the Bible says God so loves you. And, you know, I got to thinking about the word so. That little two-letter word, so. He doesn't just love me. He so loves me. He doesn't just love you. He so loves you. How big is this two-letter word, so? I mean, think about it. If you want to change a statement in a big way, I'm happy. I'm so happy. That just took it up, I don't know, how many notches? That one little two-letter word. I'm glad that, I'm so glad that That just changed everything. I'm hungry. I'm so hungry. And I know you meant that of the things of the Spirit, brother. I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt. Because I love you. No, I so love you. No. Let me tell you something. This is a powerful word. Think about it. Honey, I'm sorry. Versus, honey, I'm so sorry. (laughs) This is the only word you ever need to use in response to the accusations of the evil one. To the accusations of your own flesh. Because let me tell you something. The first accuser in your life is your flesh. Your unredeemed flesh will rise up to accuse you. Well, you love God and you still got cancer. I'm telling you, I want you to try this. Don't engage the devil. He's a master debater. Remember Eve in the garden. He's a master of debate, of using flesh, your reasoning against you. So the devil comes to you, well, you love God, you pay your tithe, you're faithful, and you still got a a diagnosis of cancer, say one word back to him, so, and stop. (laughs) There's no rebuttal for that. He can't come back. What, what, so, how, how can you just say so? You've been asking God for a long time. You've been praying about that for a long time. The answer still hadn't come. So? And stop right there. There's still pain in your body. So? You didn't get the promotion. So? 
Because if you go much further, the devil is going to get the upper hand. Don't try to reason with the devil. Ever. Man, how powerful is this word so? Because he so loves me. He is so with me. He is so for me. When you know who you are in Christ Jesus, when you know who you belong to, when you know who it is that saved you, when you know who it is that loves you, when you know who it is who goes before you, when you know who it is who is always with you, you can reach deep down into the spiritual arsenal on the inside of you, and when the devil accuses you, all you've got to say is, so, when the devil challenges the word of God to you, just say, so, when your own flesh attacks you, all you've got to do is say, so, because I am so loved, I am so forgiven, I am so filled, I am so accepted, I am so free, therefore, let the redeemed of the Lord say, hallelujah, so, let me tell you something right now, when God says so, I can say so, when God says so, it is so, when he had finished speaking, he said to Peter, Put out into the deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Simon Peter answered, Luke chapter 5, verse 5. Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything. But because you say so, I will let the nets down. Somebody in here today, I don't know, maybe you just needed one more little nudge to step out of the boat and decide you're going to believe God. This is why you need to do it. But because you say so, Lord, that changed everything. Because you say so, I'm going to do it. I've already fished all night. God, I've prayed. I've fasted. I've given. I've served. I have agreed. I have sat in council. But because you say so, I'm going to pray one more time. I'm going to give one more time. I'm going to get a prayer of agreement one more time. I'm going to have hands laid on me one more time. I'm going to get anointed with oil one more time. Because you say so. I'll do it again. I once was lost, but now I'm found because he said so. I once was sick, but I got healed because he said so. I once was blind, but now I see because he said so. I once was bound, but now I'm free because he said so. I once was weak, but now I'm strong because he said so. I was broken, but now I'm whole because he said so. I once was bitter, but now I'm better because he said so. I once was stressed, but now I'm blessed because he said so. My friend, God doesn't just love you. He so loves you. Hallelujah. I mean, every parent knows that there are times in the life of rearing, in the, in, the, yeah, in, the, in, the, in the walk of rearing children, there are times in the lives of children and in the process of their development when all that you can say to the child is because I said so. And we're all like children. Jesus said we better be like children. Childlike faith. Sometimes all God can say to me, because His ways are not my ways. His thoughts are not my thoughts. They're far beyond my understanding. All God can say sometimes is, because I said so. And that has to be enough. That has to be enough for us to believe, to trust, to stand, to continue, to to, to know that we know, to have the assurance of knowing. Because God said so, it shall be so. The rest of the story, Peter, verse 6, 
When they had done so, they caught out, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. So they signaled to the partners in the other boats to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. So, when your flesh accuses you, when the devil accuses you, all you got to do is reach inside, pull out this one little two-letter word. So. So. Now, you know how that makes your flesh feel when somebody tells you that, right? Well, Pastor, I'm gonna, and you didn't. Uh, so, boy, the flesh. <laughs> I'm telling you, it'll work on the devil. Deny yourself. Let's get back to that. Number two in the process take up your cross. Not his cross. He said, take up. Your cross. Jesus is the only one who ever told us in all of the Bible to take up our own cross, to take up our cross and follow Him. The cross, little c. Little c, cross. My cross, your cross. But it does still mean self-denial. It does still mean exposure to death. Jesus just told us, if you lose your life for my sake, that's how you truly find it. That, that's how you truly gain life. And these must happen in the order Jesus gave, because you will never take up your cross if you don't first deny yourself. And again, all of this started, do you want to be my disciple? Do you really want to be my disciple? Well, let's come back to that. Do we really want to be his disciple? Do I really want to make his cause my cause? Uh, do I really want to make his vision my vision? Do I really want to make his words my words? Do I really want to make his pain my pain? Do I really want to make his kingdom my kingdom? If so, I've got to take up my cross and follow him. Now, I want to help you understand your cross. A lot of confusion about that in the body of Christ. Again, it's not His cross, it's your cross, it's my cross. His cross was one of pain, suffering, shame, sickness, infirmity, guilt, rejection. That was the cross of Jesus. He carried that cross once and for all. Your cross is not about any of that. This is the way I understand my cross, my calling is on my cross. My destiny, my purpose, my gifts and abilities and talents that God has placed in me are on my cross. Every resource that I need to carry out His purpose in my life is attached to my cross. And He's not called me to carry yours. And he's not called you to carry mine. I got to carry mine. You got to carry yours. So when, you, so, so, so when I hear the words of Jesus, take up your cross, it means take up everything God has deposited in my life and work it to the fullest. Use every talent, every skill, every ability, the knowledge, the learning. The degrees, if you have those. Use your testimony, your story, as we sung about this morning. Use that business for eternal purposes. Find your place or your places in the service of the house of the Lord as well. Take up your cross. Allow the grace of God in your life to be released to others. Grow where you are planted. Bear fruit where you have been planted. And plant where you want to see something grow too. You see, your cross is your cause. Your cross is your part. 
in the kingdom, in the plan of God. Your, your cross is your contribution that only you can make. Your cross is the course, the race that He's called you to run. So deny yourself, take up your cross, and then Jesus says, follow me, follow me. Now, there were more who chose not to than who chose to follow him. Well, that's just too much. I, d- deny myself, what? G- give everything I have to the poor and come and follow, what? I, I, go and sin no more. Well, that's impossible. Who can live a sinless life? You know, I, 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 I have to say something right here. I'm so tired of hearing people thank a God they don't even know. Maybe that's just me. Thank you, Jesus. They don't even know Jesus, let alone follow Him. How much more does it honor him that I give him words of praise, but I do not obey him? Is he honored by my hand clapping and my singing when I'm not living a life that's following him? Could it be that my obedience honors him more than singing a song? I don't know, maybe it's just me. I'm just so weary with people that thank God for everything and they don't even know God. It's politically correct in many circles in this country still to thank God when the cameras are rolling. Need I say more? If you love me, obey me, serve me, follow me. Don't say you love me. Don't say, thank you, Jesus. I want to thank God. Don't make me get started. (laughs) I would like to thank God for this award, and I want to... Now, most of them, a lot of the times, if they're female, all you got to do is look at what they're wearing to know they ain't following Jesus. I told y'all, don't make me go there. I'm suggesting that a life Following Jesus is a song and a praise and a worship before Him. It's more than words. It's a life lived in denying self, taking up your cross, and following after Him. That's the greatest song, the greatest shout, the greatest praise that any one of us could ever offer up to the Lord. Let us never be guilty of thanking a God, singing to a God, using words to affirm a God that we are not serving every single day of our lives. No, Jesus didn't say, if you, love, if you love me, cheer me on. Is that what he said? If you love me, applaud for me. He said, if you love me, obey me. If you love me, sir, if you love me, do what I'm telling you to do. Walk and serve me. Live a life of obedience before me. Follow my example. Follow my heart. Follow my cause. Follow my works. Follow my words. A great evangelist who preached that five year long great revival in Pensacola, Florida, from 1995 to the year 2000, every night. People from all over the world came. I was there many times. 
And he preached a message that I will never forget so long as I live. Jesus warned us, be careful who you follow. There are blind guides leading the blind, and thus they all fall into the ditch. He said, everybody is following somebody. Be careful that you're not following a blind guide. Jesus referred to the religious leaders of his day, many of them as being blind guides. He said it several times throughout the Gospels. If the blind lead the blind, they both fall into the ditch. I hope nobody in here is being led around today by a blind guide. Are you following someone who is blind? Are you being led around by the blind guide? And let me give you, let me tell you the first blind guide in each of our lives. The flesh. This is nothing new. Human nature has never changed. The Apostle Paul makes reference to this when he's writing to the church in Corinth, in, in Corinth to the Corinthian church in Corinthians 1 verse 12. Paul says, one of you says, I follow Paul. And another one says, I follow Apollos. And another one says, I follow Cephas. And another one says, I follow Joel Osteen. And another one says, I follow John Hagee. And another one says, I follow T.D. Jakes. And another one... And it's okay to follow them because Paul went on to say, if you see that I am following Jesus, if my life is is merely a reflection of Jesus, then follow me. But if not, don't follow me. Don't follow me. So stop following your blind friends and follow Jesus. Stop following Facebook and follow Jesus. This is, a, this is a message today on how to win friends and influence people. <laughs> don't, uh, don't be following Instagram. Follow Jesus. Don't follow your finances. Uh-oh. Now don't get in our wallets now. Don't get in our wallets, Pastor. I'll give you, you didn't have to say nothing about money. Don't follow your money. Stop following your money. And make sure you're following Jesus. By all means, stop following your own flesh. And follow Jesus. And how do we do it? One day at a time. So Jesus asked the question. You want to be my disciples? Deny yourself. Take up your cross. And follow after me. Let's bow our heads. Father, Lord, that is the call that you placed on my heart for today. Whether you're watching online or you're here in this room with us, let the Holy Spirit speak to you in this moment. Are you a follower? Are you just a spectator? Are you just a fan? Are you staying a little distant? Just watching from afar, checking it out, not too sure. Or are you a follower of Jesus Christ? Because let me tell you something. The devil knows the difference. He knows the difference between those that are truly following Jesus and those that are just playing around, doing the religious thing. Just a little ceremony, a little song here, a little tip, a little $5 bill in the offering. Then I go my merry way and God's all all okay with me. I did my God thing. Are you a follower? Are you denying yourself every single day in order to know Him, in order to be in, involved with what He's doing, in order to go where He wants you to go and say what He wants you to say? Are you taking up your cross? Are you serving? Are you active? Are you working the promises of God in your life? Are you, are you, are you doing something with what He's deposited in you? Are you investing those talents that He's given to your life? And are you following? Are we following Him? Are we following Him? Are we carrying out His purpose in this earth? He's left it to us. 
Acts chapter 1 says that we're to take it up and continue to do all that Jesus began. It says in Acts chapter 1, all that he began, all that he began to do, all he did was get it started for us. Are we continuing his work? Are we continuing to follow him? And I'm going to ask this question. If this is your prayer, this is the commitment you're making before God today to deny yourself take up your cross and follow him from this day forward each and every single day because again you can't just make this decision in a day and go on man this is something that I pray will be in our face every single day Lord I want to deny myself today I'm going to take up my cross today whatever that means for me today and follow you whatever that means for me today I'm going to take up my cross deny myself take up my cross and follow you Jesus if that's where you are And that's where you want to be each and every day. From across this room, I don't want anybody to look around because it's not about anybody seeing anything but God seeing seeing a response, a response from you. Would you raise your hand quickly? Put it up, put it up, put it up. That's your prayer. Put it up, put it up, put it up. All over the building, put it up. Yes, 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 yes. Everybody standing, everybody standing right here. Lord, we're going to be a church that follows you. We're going to be a people that follows you, Jesus. We're going to be a people that denies our flesh, denies ourself. There's nothing redeeming in my flesh. There's nothing redeeming in self. Self is dying. There's no hope for self. There's no hope for self. There's only hope for my soul, my spirit, man, where you live, Holy Spirit. So I deny myself. I choose to deny myself. I choose to take up my cross and I choose to follow you, Jesus, each and every day. And Lord, whatever that means, because it can mean something a little different each and every day also. It can mean taking up my cross can mean something really different one day to the next. Lord, make us followers. Holy Spirit, bother us, nudge us, remind us, shake us as we need to be shaken not to live according to the flesh we reap death we reap corruption that we never never live according to the flesh but we live according to the spirit because then we reap life everlasting we reap of the spirit every good thing that heaven has for our lives so Lord forgive us for living after the flesh forgive me for indulging my flesh forgive me for gratifying the desires of my flesh the lusts of my flesh Wash me and cleanse me in your blood, Lord Jesus. Forgive us, Lord Jesus, and wash us in the blood so we might take up our crosses and follow you and we might do it every single day that you give us in this life, in this temporary realm, in the earth realm. And Lord, I thank you for that today. That's the prayer that we all just said, I I want that to be my life. From this day forward, I want that to be who I am. I do want to be a true disciple. I want to be a true follower. I don't, I don't ever want to be guilty of thanking a God that I'm not serving, that I'm not obeying, that I'm not following. I want to be able to know when I thank God, I'm thanking a God that I know. He's real to me. He lives inside of me. He walks with me and talks with me. And He tells me that I am so loved. I'm so loved. I'm so loved. So thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. So in Jesus' name, let the redeemed of the Lord say, Let the redeemed of the Lord say, With that, God bless you. You can be dismissed.